Let's look at the new Kvetin Armoury Cup Hilt Rapier. Hey folks, Matt Eason here of Scholar Gladiatore. Now many of you would know that over the years I've done various things with Kvetin Armoury, um, most famously the Eastern Sabre Mark III. Um, and there might be some more news on Sabre related things and other things in the future and my work with Kvetin is continuing. But they became aware a little while ago that I had strayed from the path and become a rapierist. No, I'm not really a rapierist, I promise, <laughs> despite all the rumours, but I do dabble. I do dabble a little bit in the rapier. And I have to be honest, this is the sword. This is the old one. This is not the new one. This is the sword that converted me to the way of rapier. It's very long. Luckily, there's a hatch above me here. If I do that, I hit the ceiling. Um, so this is a 45 inch blade. Now, for anyone who does long sword or sabre, you know, most sabres have 32, 33 inch blades usually. Um, long swords usually have about 37 to 39 inch blades. When you're handed something which gives you the reach of 45 inches, there's something strangely empowering about having such a long implement in your hands. Uh, but moreover, it's got really good hand protection. It's really nimble. It handles really nicely. Now, I have had rapiers in the past. In fact, I've had a few different rapiers over the years. And I never really got on that well with them in terms of actual fencing. Um, now, I have never really studied rapier in a dedicated way. I've always, like, you know, picked up a rapier occasionally and done a little bit of rapier. I've attended other people's rapier classes. You know, I've sparred with rapier occasionally over the years, but I've never really specialised it in it. And I am starting to look at sources a little bit now, largely because I just love how this sword handles. And in fact, in recent months, I've actually found myself, you know, I think, oh, shall I do some sort of buckler or maybe some sabre? Let's do some more rapier. I just find it really, really fun. So if you're someone who's never been a rapierist, but you've dabbled in other things, maybe sabre, uh, maybe foil, maybe a modern Olympic weapons, maybe long sword, uh, sword and buckler, whatever, I urge you, if you've never tried rapier, give it a try because it's really different, really fresh. Obviously, it has lots of overlap with uh, small sword, um, and if you've done modern Olympic fencing, you'll certainly be able to carry over a lot of your base knowledge uh, into the weapon. But it is a characteristic thing in its own right. It's not a particularly light sword, and that's a misconception lots of people have about rapiers. This is actually 1170 grams. I literally just measured it for the purposes of this quick review. But and I bear in mind, just to reiterate, this is the old cup hilt from Kvetin. This has been updated. We're going to look at the update in a second. And um, it's a, so it's not a particularly heavy weapon, but it's not a particularly light weapon either. It's kind of medium weight sword, but with a 45 inch blade, it's got a really, really long reach. And obviously it's a point centric, thrust centric weapon. You can cut with it. I personally, you know, different systems will, or different tournaments will award cuts in different ways and deal with cuts because clearly this is a very narrow blade. That being said, if this was sharp, I wouldn't want to get a hard hit. And because it's got such a long blade, it gets quite a lot of momentum and speed to it. I wouldn't want to get a slash from one of these across the, the head or the uh, legs or, you know, something like this. Um, particularly the legs, I find actually, uh, it can give a really hard blow. So you've got to be somewhat careful with them. So even if it's not going to cleave off limbs and this kind of stuff, you can still do a fairly effective, in terms of the fight, a fairly effective cut with one of these. They are cut and thrust swords, even if they are thrust centric. Uh, but having such a long weapon that's so nimble and wieldable and such good hand protection and you can keep people so far away, it's just huge, huge fun. And if you're more familiar with whether it's kendo or modern fencing or whether it's long sword or sword and buckler or sabre or whatever, if you haven't done rapier, you will find it a lot of fun. So there, there's the sales pitch set out for trying some rapier. Now, this is the sword that converted me to, um, or rather made me enjoy rapier fencing. Um, formerly I dabbled in it, but I never really enjoyed it much. When I got this, I freaking loved it, okay? And I've been using this sword quite a bit over the last um, year, in fact. I got it pretty much a year ago to the day because um, I got it at an event I ran, run, uh, which was last May. And um, I've had a lot of fun with this and I love this. But Alex at Kvetin Armoury said, Matt, there's a new version. <laughs> um, so I had to have one. And it's been sent and it's just arrived. I've literally just got it out. I've got all of the wrapping and plastic and everything. I've literally just unwrapped it now. And it's great, okay? So now fundamentally the blade is the same. 
although not quite, but I'll come back to that in a second. Um, the main difference, let's look at the hilts. The main difference here um, are the hilts, okay? So, fundamentally they're the same type of sword. Now, one thing I must say about my old sword here, which I'll continue to use, is that I have shortened the hilt on this. Initially, I found the hilt on the um, old Covet and Cup hilt too long. And it's quite funny, because I went to Alex and I said, at Covet and Armory, and I said, Alex, I've shortened the hilt, I've sawed the uh, thread on the tang down, unscrewed the pommel, it's easy to do. You just saw the thread off, screw it back on, and now the pommel's in line with the guard, as it usually is on a, on a Spanish or Southern Italian cup hilt like this. It looks better, it handles better, I much prefer it, your grips were too long. And Alex said, Matt, we've already shortened the grips. So the one I had was one with a long grip, but they had already moved on to a shorter grip. So. Great minds think alike, I'd already shortened the grip, they moved it to, look, by coincidence, or maybe not, the exact same length. So it seems that this is the mod Matt Easton modified one, turns out to be exactly the same length as the Kvetan one. Now I can't claim credit for this, Kvetan did that for themselves, completely independently of me, but clearly there is a sort of poetry to that, that they ended up with the same length as me. Anyway. Fundamentally, it's the same kind of hilt, same proportions, same size, roughly the same weight. We'll talk about weight in a second. There are some differences. So the main difference is, you'll see this one has simple straight guard and a little hooky thing, which I have to say does get caught on stuff and wasn't very convenient. And Covetan have now moved to actually what's a more typical Spanish or Southern Italian style cup hilt um, terminals with these really nice kind of, I imagine they're lathe turned ends on either end there and matching at the end of the guard. This looks more like the ones you'll see in museums than this one does. Not to say that this is unhistorical, but this looks better, is more refined, is more expertly made, I would say. It requires a bit more work, more work's gone into it and more development as well. But it also looks more like the antiques. There is another major constructional difference. You'll notice the pommels are almost exactly the same. There's a minor difference. This one's got a bit more of a rounded knob, so to speak, and this one's a bit more of a flat, flattened knob, but they're very, very similar. Um, the main constructional difference is this guard is completely independent of this uh, bowl on the old one, except for those screws which screw through the end of the finger, pass down the uh, finger rings that go inside the cup hilt there. On the new one, they are welded as well as screwed. So I'll just show you that up close because I was quite surprised. I didn't know that's how they were constructed on these. So here we go. You'll notice that these bars no longer just sit against the cup. They are actually welded to it. What's the difference? Well, first of all, that means you won't get vibrations between the guard and the cup. So very often the cup gets hit and it dislodges. And in fact, I can show this on my old one. Um, because you'll notice, because it's received numerous hits, including last Friday night, the guard is no longer sitting quite in that, um, in that notch there. Come on, focus. There we go. Um, it's kind of come out. And that does mean you get vibrations between the cut, cup and the guard, and if the guard gets a bit bent, it can come out, that kind of stuff. It's not really a problem, but it's just something to note. Um, and you will notice that this is screwed if we go on there, it's actually screwed with two nuts onto the end of, um, uh, th rather these are bolts that go through and go through the thread on the inside of the uh, finger rings. Uh, slightly different construction in that those were hex ended and these are rounded and they have got a Allen key hole in there. So slightly different way of fixing it in, but fundamentally the same, just a different head essentially. Now, this does look more refined, and it should be noted that um, on the originals, these guards are sometimes attached to the bowl and sometimes not attached to the bowl. Either's historical, either's fine. An advantage, as I've said, you're not going to get the guard being moving independently of the uh, bowl. So you can hear it rings like a bell now because it's all one solid object. The disadvantage I can potentially see is these guards, particularly if you're fencing against people with heavier rapiers or side swords or sabers or long swords or anything like that, sometimes these guards get a really heavy whack and will get bent, okay? Now, if that bends, it does put quite a lot of a stress point on this junction here where that weld is. We'll have to see how it stands up. I do think that that's potentially, whereas this one could kind of yield, as it were, and come out of the notch and then you just straighten it and put it back in, with this one, there's no yield, it's 
Although it's less likely to bend and dislodge, if it does, it's more likely to break the weld, I think. But we'll see, and hopefully it'll be super strong, hopefully it won't be a problem. And um, these aren't especially thick, I have to say, but they are thicker than the ones I've seen on equivalent handways and stuff like that. So they've got the proportions and the look of the daintiness of the originals right, while also still being relatively strong. But time will tell how that stands up. There's another thing which is really, really good, and I don't know how easily I'm gonna be able to show this on camera. If you just look inside, there we go. If you just look inside here, there is a sort of langet which comes up here, and this is really nicely rounded. Now that is where your one or two, I actually put two fingers over, but if you put one finger over, your fi finger rests against those rounded edges, or two fingers rest against those rounded edges. One of the bad things on the uh, previous model was that it was quite, let's see in there, quite pointy. Can you see that point there? And while that looks really nice, that's kind of irrelevant because it's hidden inside the bowl, so you don't see it anyway. And it does mean that when you've got your fingers over there, there's a little bit of a point which the leather, I mean, the leather of my glove didn't wear through, but I felt like it might do with time. So that's something to be aware of. The rings haven't really functionally changed. Um, as far as I can see, the rings look basically the same on both. One thing that is noticeable about the new one is the bars here that your fingers go over do feel thinner. So I do feel on my old one, um, the one I've been using literally up until today, um, I've got a slightly bigger surface area for my fingers and my hand to rest against, which perhaps makes it slightly more comfortable against the hand because the, the force is spread out over a larger surface area. This feels smaller inside here. There is uh, one other difference on the hilt as well, and that's the grip shape. Now this might seem like a minor thing because anybody could change the grip relatively easily, but you'll notice uh, one disadvantage and also relatively unhistorical thing on this grip is it is just a cone, essentially. It's a straight tapering uh, line. Now, when you've got two fingers over the um, guard in, around the, through the finger ring, it's unlikely the hand is gonna slide down uh, because it can't, because you've got two fingers above the cross guard. But having such a thin and relatively straight grip doesn't give an enormous amount of um, sort of control over the grip itself. Really, it's these two fingers through the hole above the guard that gives you the most control. With the new grip, it is a more historical shape that is more wasted and more, more kind of hourglass, you'll notice. So it swells out at the top third. And this is a very typical grip shape you find on rapiers and sizels, even a lot of arming swords as well, where you essentially have the swell, the, the widest point is about two thirds down from the pommel and one third up from the cross guard. This is quite typical. And that does sit in the hand because it swells into your hand. Now, actually some Spanish rapiers, and um, Southern Italian as well, because the Kingdom of Naples was under Spanish control and indeed Dutch as well. Um, some of them actually have more swollen grips than that. Swollen in this direction, swollen in that direction. And that is, is, especially if you're putting two fingers over, that really swells into the middle of your palm, fills up your palm and gives you very, very good uh, control and fills the hand. I actually feel like I could do with a slightly bigger grip, slightly fatter grip than this. That being said, as I've always said, grips are a bit of a personal thing. You can have someone who's exactly the same size and shape and age as me, who's just got different hands and prefers a different type of grip. So it's a very personal thing. So I think to an extent, having a smaller grip is a better thing than having an overly large grip because you can always wrap the grip as you like it. You could wire up this or, or whatever, put more leather around it or cord or whatever you like. So. If I wanted to make that bigger, then I could, and I might do. Let's wait and see how it goes. There is one final difference which really surprised me about this, because initially I got these out and I was looking at all of the differences on the um, hilts, uh, and I was thinking it was all about the hilts, because in theory, on paper, these are the same blade, okay? These are the same model of blade, and as far as I'm aware, I mean, there's no difference in the design, there's no difference in the ricasso, there's no difference in the visible thickness at uh, the base of the blade, this kind of thing. They are the same blade, they've just updated the hilt. However, what I will say is that Cavettes and Swords, just like almost all companies out there, they make handmade products and there are some variations between individual examples. Um, so, for example, we've many times ordered the Eastern Sabre Mark III. We've ordered multiples of them, 10 or 20 at a time, for club members. 
and when you line them all up they don't all handle exactly the same. Some are a bit lighter, some are a bit heavier, some balance further from the hand, some balance closer to the hand. So sometimes you can have one that's heavier but balances closer to the hand, or sometimes you get one that's lighter and balances further from the hand, or swap that around. So you do get variations, and that is purely because these are hand ground blades. And therefore the tapering, the distal taper, and everything else varies very, very, very slightly between individual examples. But in the hand, this can actually make a big difference. Now, what's interesting is, these don't feel the same in the hand, despite the fact that they look incredibly similar, except for the uh, sort of details, as you might think. But they actually feel really, really different. My old one feels much um, sort of more hefty, if we use that word, much sort of sturdier in the hand, and I don't dislike that. The new one feels much more nimble. Okay, so this one feels lighter in the blade. Now, I've actually weighed these two swords. I haven't dismantled them, so it's difficult for me to be able to say what the exact difference, uh, cause of the difference in weight is. But this one weighs very slightly over a thousand grams. That is one kilogram. It's like, it's like 1,007 or something like that. It's like a few grams over 1,000. So let's call it 1,000 grams. This one is 1170 grams, so nearly 1200 grams. So there's actually quite a big weight difference between these two swords. So despite the fact that they're the same type of sword, they're the same length of sword, they've both got 45 inch blades from the guard, 42 inch from the top of the bowl. Um, they actually feel quite different in the hand, which is great for me because I've essentially now got two cup hilts that feel quite differently. And if I'm fighting someone who's using a heavier weapon, for example, I might choose the beefier one. And if I'm fighting someone who's got a light, quick, you know, rapier or small sword or something, I'll probably choose this one. Um, so they do feel different. And I'm not certain whether that's because of a design difference in the, in the newer versions, or if this one, because I bought this one uh, from a dealer, so I didn't order it directly from Kvetan, maybe this was ordered with a slightly heavier blade, I don't know. But there is a difference in flex as well. And if I just turn around and flex on my post, um, the, the new one, the lighter one, certainly flexes more easily than my older, thicker, stiffer one. And if I look along the blades, the new one, which is lighter, does indeed look somewhat skinnier um, than the old one. And this is largely, if I just put it down to demonstrate, this is largely not because it's narrower or got more distal taper at the mid rib or anything like this, but it's largely because the old one has slightly more apple seeded edges and the new one has slightly more directly beveled edges. So essentially the old one has a bit more mass in the blade, even if the stats on paper kind of look the same. Anyway, do I like it? Do I like the new one? Yes, I freaking love it. And I think a lot of people love it at only a thousand grams for a 45 inch blade. This is going to dominate a lot of other swords. Um, uh, it's so quick, so nimble, so responsive at the tip. I think possibly, and we'll wait to see when I've got to use it, um, which and hopefully I'll get to use it tonight actually at training. I think possibly the only thing that I might not like about the new one as much as the old one is the fact that it is much more flexible in the blade. And I actually quite like the reassuring stiffness of my old one because when you thrust someone, they stay thrust. And obviously these are not sharp weapons. So because they've got blunt rolled tips, they're both rolled tips. There's different options for tips, by the way, with Kvetan, so with any of their blades. Um, but when you thrust someone and they're trying to thrust you, pushing them away is actually quite a useful defensive thing in fencing, in sport fencing. Obviously with a sharp blade, it would enter their body and you wouldn't be pushing them away. But with a blunt blade, if it's stiffer, it keeps them further away from you and helps protect you against a double or an after blow. With a more flexible blade, it's more likely they'll continue coming in and get you with their thrust or cut or whatever they're doing. Um, so essentially, in a nutshell, much, much more refined hilt on the new one. I absolutely love it. It's only an improvement. It's better in every single possible way. The only thing that possibly I prefer about my old one is the slightly stiffer and sturdier blade. And bear in mind, if you want a stiffer and sturdier blade on the new cup hilt, you can get it because you have different blade options and Kvetan can customize any individual sword. So if you want to do anything different with these, uh, then you just have to talk to them about it. So there we go. Overall, a massive um, 
improvement, I would say, a refinement. I think that's the headline here. This is a much more refined and historically accurate cup hilt for Spain, uh, the Netherlands and southern Italy specifically. Uh, they were used in other places as well, of course, like South America and stuff, but, but predominantly that's, that's where these were made, was most of them were, these cup hilts were made in Spain and southern Italy. Um, and the old one was great, um, I, and I would recommend the old one to anyone, but the new one, I would say, even better. So thanks a lot to Kvetten for your ongoing um, striving to make better and better products all the time and never stopping in driving that forwards. Uh, as you well know, for HEMA training equipment, they are currently my absolute favourite company to deal with and that's why I developed the Eastern Sabre with them and that's why I'm continuing to develop other products uh, in the future with them. Um, but uh, I didn't have any part in the development of this cup hilt, but I love it and I'm really looking forward to using it at training. Thanks a lot for watching. I have been Matt Easton and I will continue to be. See you really soon, folks.